guys for joining us for another episode of Black Coffee and Crime. We have just finished the first part of uh, the services today. You guys did not get a chance to see that. Thank sweet baby Jesus. Um, but we are going to go ahead and continue uh, with the program as follows. Um, so again, thank you guys for joining us. This is episode 64. Where we're actually going to talk about incels, um, which is a term that's not common um, but we're going to tell you what that is. Um, also, thank you to any new subscribers to our YouTube channel. Yay. Um, also those, um, those of you on Facebook as well as on Instagram, but if you're a YouTube subscriber, make sure you like, um, and hit the notification button. So when new episodes come up on Tuesday, um, you'll be notified. I try to have those episodes uploaded like at four o'clock in the morning. But that's not always the case. They're always on Tuesday, but they're not always uploaded for you. Um, but they will be coming to you on Tuesday. I'll try to get better about that. Um, let's see. So again, thank you. Um, do we have anything, by the way, of church announcements this week? Just keep me. Just keep me on uh, in prayer. Just keep me in prayer. Just keep me in prayer. All the prayer warriors. So funny. Just that my little baby said she'd be in the sick shut in it all day every year. So I just I immediately thought about that and it just I know y'all seeing me. I'm still on the sick and shut in, mm-hmm. even if I'm present in service today. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And moving right along. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. Right along. I will uh, give a testimony, but I don't want to uh, prolong service. And I, if we're not accepting testimonies this week, maybe at Bible we'll study. Hey, <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, and we just got Thanksgiving. Oh, no testimony. Now we, now we get testimony service. Look, the pastor has some things to do after service. So, oh, man. you know, man. the pastor has a conference. And shortly we after on service. so we we're gonna yeah. we're gonna save the testimonies for bible study so. <laughs> amen amen <laughs> the lord been good to me despite my my uh ailments since you i've been you know we're gonna edit this out <laughs> <laughs> no we're not editing it out go ahead and give a testimony if you want to no i ain't gonna give a testimony i ain't gonna prolong service Talking about the Lord being good to me. I'm quite sure he has because he woke you up this morning. I ain't, morning. ain't never heard no church to say there ain't no testimony service today. <laughs> this is this is a new day. Oh, Bible study. This is a, this is a new day. Keep your testimony <laughs> private. Just like we can't go by the Old Testament, we can't go by oh, the yeah. church. Well, what, to, like got, like on uh, a few moves, you know, you got you get what two minutes or more. And do you know they be cutting folks' mics off? Yeah, I know my church do it. <laughs> so I know. Okay. You cut off mics over here. They let you let you take seven minutes. They will. Oh, no. We're not going all the way back. All right. So and you know, happy Thanksgiving to everyone that was last uh last week. So happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully, hopefully everyone had a good day. If you are not from the US, hopefully you had a great national break holiday off. Um, so there's that. Um, so we're approaching the Christmas season. Um we will be announcing some sort of, you know, giveaway, Christmas giveaway, holiday giveaway, um, most likely on the next episode. Or if you watch, uh, watch our pages, um, Facebook and Instagram at Black Coffee Crime, you'll probably see an announcement later on during the week. All right. So those are the announcements as follows. Please govern yourselves accordingly. All right. Uh, one thing we want to do, we do want to talk about because it's very interesting that happened this week or last week um, before we get into the story is that um, a major author's work was found out to be quite false. Uh, Alice Siebold, I don't know if you guys uh, remember, I know Brandy, you do the the movie uh, Lovely Bones about the little girl who was kidnapped and raped and She's like mm-hmm. retelling her story from the afterlife or whatever. 
Well, right. the author of that book, she said it was partially true, based on a partial, partially based on a true story. And also she drew from her own experience being sexually assaulted. Well, she yeah. also wrote a memoir called Lucky. And in her memoir, she details her rape and sexual assault. Well, that movie was supposed, excuse me, that book was supposed to be turned into a movie um, commissioned by Netflix. One of the producers, it's, it's a lot of stuff that happened. So the, the, the guy who was supposed to have allegedly raped Alice Siebold, his name was Anthony. And the actor who was supposed to play him in the movie dropped out of the movie. And he's like, I'm doing that because you know, it's just a stereotypical image of black men and I, he doesn't want a part of it. Well, one of the producers of the movie is going through the script and he's like, the man thing, math. Something is not adding up to what she said in her book and to what is in this script. So um, he starts to ask questions and the other producers and the directors are like, no, we're, we're gonna go through with it. Um, they also offer to change the main characters or the, the, the character of the uh, rapist to a white man. And that same producer was like, that doesn't make sense because that, that you know, changes the authentication of, this, of the movie, of the story if the rapist is white, because you said he was black. So he keeps going, he keeps digging they fire him. So he's like, if I get fired as a producer, something's really wrong. He starts digging, he hires a, a private investigator. Come to find out, he wasn't a man who raped a girl. So uh, the man's name who was convicted of the crime was Anthony Broadwater. Mm -hmm. um, he had always, this is from the New York Times. Uh, he always maintained his, uh, his innocence He's now 61 years old. This crime wow. was supposed to have taken in 19, taken place in 1981. And wow. yeah, so she published her memoir, Lucky, about 20 years <clears throat> after some 2001 that came out. Um, and he's been, you know, he's been released for quite some time, but you were in prison for rape, which in prison, it makes you persona non grata. And a black man convicted of rape of a white woman they made it extra hard for him. So he's he's had a lot of trouble trying to get his life back together. Um, but it's crazy because Lovely Bones was built, the, the, the premise of that book was built off her recollection of, or her story about her sexual assault. When you find out that her, the story was false, she said that after the sexual assault, she would have been able to recognize the man anywhere. And that the man who raped her um, came up to her later and said, hey, you look familiar, something like, you look familiar, I know I know you. But when they arrested the guy, they had to look for the guy. Like, they passed Anthony Broadwater up when they were doing their sweep. They passed him by. And then they had to go back and get him. And when they did, now she, mind you, she said that she would recognize him anywhere. But when they got him to the police station, got her to the police station to do to identify him. She couldn't identify him, but she said that she just saw him. That the man who sexually assaulted her just randomly walked up to her and said, you look familiar, don't I know you? But when you get to the, to the police station, you can't identify him. They convicted him with no real evidence, which is not foreign to us. Um, so, so far her publisher, which I think is Scribner, they, I, let me, I believe it's Scribner. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. Um, they haven't taken her books off of the shelf yet. So they, you know, they haven't pulled her books yet. So there's going to be selling a book that's a lie. That's supposed to be the truth. What we'll have some truth to it. We'll have some truth. Right. To it. So the book Lovely Bones was fiction, but partially based on a true story. And also she drew from her own experience as being a sexual assault victim. But her memoir is based on her rape. 
Now, I need her to say something. I was just she waiting for, for them to say that she made a statement, but she hasn't she said anything. She hasn't said nothing. And probably one is unless she's forced to say something. But other than that, she's not saying that. You know, How can you yeah. force somebody to say something, though? You know, like uh, maybe if, if she's getting too much flack about it, you know, the publicist will tell you, hey, look, I think this is best at this point that you make a public uh, statement in regards to this. And this is, and her marketing team will tell her to do it. They will pressure her into doing that because they think that's the best thing for her. But if, if it's up to her, I don't think she'll say So um, she actually wrote in the memoir, this is again for the New York Times article, from a New York Times article, she wrote that um, after she they did the rape kit, she described um, the assailant or the rapist. But her, the sketch that they came up with didn't look like Mr. Broadwater. Well, after she pointed him out, she pointed somebody else out too. Yeah. So it says uh, also in this article, Mr. Broad, this is quoted directly from this article, Mr. Broadwater was arrested five months later um, after the assault, uh, after Ms. Sebo passed him on the street and contacted police saying that she may have seen her attacker. But she identified a different man as her attacker in the police lineup. In her memoir, she writes that Mr. Broadwater and the man next to him looked alike and that moments after she made her choice, she felt she picked the wrong man. She later identified Mr. Broadwater in court. So you identify Mr. Broadwater as being the guy. Then you say the two men look alike, which is on purpose. The people in the in the lineup are supposed to look similar. Mm -hmm. Well, all you, black people look alike anyway. So right, and then you didn't pick him in the lineup, but the police still chose him as the suspect. And then you identified him. Of course you're going to identify him in court because the police picked him out for you. The police are telling you that's the guy. No, I know you saw someone else. I know you had the artist draw someone else, but this is the guy. Now, mind you, also in her memoir, she talked about Mr. Broadwater's criminal record. He doesn't have one. He never had a criminal record. Jackie, you're making faces. <laughs> I just thought I would tell you because you were just about to get into whatever it is you were about to get into and your face was, you were making faces. You know, I'm not going to edit it out, but you were making faces. <laughs> I think this man had to sign up on the sex registry. Yep. He didn't have children because he said they didn't want to have children and deal with, you yep. know. Whole life done. You know, and now he's too old to have children. That's sad. Yeah, I think that um, she should have a baby. I think that whatever monies that she made since 2001 her advances, Seriously. as well as money from appearances and talks and whatever book tours, whatever money she has made from the memoir. Now, Lucky Bones, that's just fiction based off of her experience. Um, you know, she was sexually assaulted. She just got the wrong guy. But the fact that she wrote a memoir and she wrote some things that she knew were false in that memoir, she needs to pay the man. She probably mm -hmm. thinks they're true. But the fact that he, she talked about a criminal record. He didn't have a criminal record. You could have looked that up. You knew that they weren't true because you never picked that guy out in the first place. Like it was secondary that she picked him out after suggestion. And you can no longer, the, 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 the method of, um, you know, picking, we know that an eyewitness testimony is the worst possible testimony that you can have mm -hmm. because your eyes can be tricked. Your nose can't. The most reliable thing since that you have is your sense of smell, but your now eyes will trick you. Hmm? Now, if he had been musty, she would have known that man's smell. Also, uh, there was hair analysis <laughs> um, um, that was used in hair analysis is never exact. It's always 
it could be, and that has been discredited as um, a way of identifying someone unless there's, you know, DNA attached to the, to the hair. Um, so he had been convicted of first degree rape and five related charges. Um, he's no longer considered to be a sex offender. He's been exonerated, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he will be able to be paid for any of that. Um, so I don't know yet as far as him suing the state or well, yeah, he better. People or because there's a lot of people to sue at this point. The state of New yes. York, the, the local police department, Siebold, um, her publisher, everybody, everybody. So um, needless to say, that Netflix movie based on her memoir has been pulled for now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no update on that. So, uh, but have have y'all gotten a chance to see? Shoot, the Western, the Black Western on Netflix. Have y'all had a chance to see it? I Honestly, I can't. It. The harder they fall. Yeah, thank you. I you seen the BW? Did you like it? Mm -hmm. I liked it. I, I haven't watched, watched it. I've watched it five it. times. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I have seen all kinds of steals and shots of Lakeith Stanfield. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about it's the character. He was giving everything that he was supposed to give. I don't, I don't know if there's another actor who, <laughs> who, who, who got Denzel on the walk. <laughs> but the way Lakeith walks, baby. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I watched Ke uh, Holly Berry's new movie this weekend. I try to support, it's you it's know. It's a good movie. I it's, movie. it's called Bruise. It was really good. It's a really, I really good enjoyed movie. it. Uh, Kevin Hart had um, like a mini series movie. It was it was amazing. It was good. Um, it, I was so shocked. Um, I'm not gonna, of course, tell it, but I will tell you that it is definitely worth seeing. Don't be put off by the title. Don't be put off by the fact that it's Kevin Hart. No, he acted his he acted his ass off today. You saw it, huh? You saw it? No, but every uh, everyone that I know that has watched it. Has given it rave reviews. Has said it. My friend was what movies I've been watching. This. <laughs> this what? Okay, so Brandy and my significant other have this thing about watching really campy, horrible. Gra the graphics are horrible, crazy <laughs> plot, um, like Python versus Megalodon or something. Movies like that. And oh, okay. so uh, there's a few channels if you have uh, Roku or if you have any of like, you know, any streaming service, really, um, they'll have channels that will carry this. And the one that we keep watching is Asylum and they keep showing these crazy movies. Um, what was it? Boa versus Python um, from the other day. Um, Those seem like good movies. No, they're not, Jackie. They are absolutely horrible. Man. Shark was uh, we watched Shark that. Um, Shark Shark Sharktopus. So Shark Octopus. Yeah. They it's a combination of an animal or they're fighting. Combination. Okay. Yeah. Why the hell is someone having animal like a shark and an octopus combined as one? What is it doing? Why are you even asking these questions? Just this, yeah. Um, what what was it doing? They're stress relievers. I watched the movie as a stress free. I think I watched what Meta Shark. Didn't we see that? Uh, mm -hmm. Watch Meta Shark. Shark, which is good. But why those kind of movies? Because they're awful. They're, they're, they're awful. They're, they're so bad. They're funny. They're like so. Question. So the shark octopus. What did it do? It was killing people. Yeah. But why? Who? Jackie, Jack, you're thinking way too much. About <laughs> like. Your thoughts right now are more than what they put into this movie. <laughs> okay. That's so, bad. Yeah. And there was also a movie called Sharks of the Corn. What? Sharks, sharks of the Corn. There were sharks walking in the cornfield? Girl, in the cornfield. You lying. That is no way I'm believing that. I'm going to look at it. Killing folks in the cornfield. Uh, you're, you're, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not believing that. Let's give Jackie a moment. Uh, <laughs> And then we'll go into the into the story. Sharks of the Corn. The the director is Stephen King, not Stephen King. Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see because.
because I can't imagine sharks walking through the. <laughs> Bye, shut up. <laughs> the eight headed shark. Holy shit. Actually, there's a there's two headed shark, three headed shark, four headed shark, five and six headed shark, six headed shark. And then I think we jumped to eight headed shark. I figured, let me go ahead and see. Holy, that is the creepiest little thing I've ever seen. The shark. So, Jackie, one okay. of these nights, we'll have to we'll have to get you in on the conversation watching these movies. Because that we're on the phone. The bad part is, is we are on the phone as we're watching the movie. Wait. What was the one with the anaconda we watched? Was those the anacondas? That... Oh, no, that was, was that the piranha movie? The shark oh, yeah, the piranhas. They were piranhas. Jackie, we watched a movie about these piranhas, and um, the piranhas kept getting bigger and bigger, so so big that they were jumping over houses. Like, well, I don't know if they were getting so big, but they could. I mean, they brought down a helicopter. No, they they were getting bigger because what? they were like eating houses. They jumped over a what? What was the helicopter? They, they brought down a helicopter. A piranha. <laughs> they jumped on the helicopter and pulled it down. That would be I would be mind blown watching that. Oh my I god, really what would. was the name of that movie? Okay, this I shark, this was a shark the puss. That's a scary looking thing though. It's kind of creepy. Like this, it's kind of odd. The back yeah. half of it is an octopus. Yeah, it, this is weird. Is somebody creepy? Hmm. Comic it was uh, I don't think the sharktopus was created. Well, they always have a scientist, a very beautiful scientist that um, nobody realizes her beauty till she takes her glasses off. And, right. and all of a sudden she has a push-up bra and, cur and these crazy curls and she actually has like a assault rifle and she's, she's like a Barbie Rambo or something. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is absolutely horrible. Um, I wish I could find the new mm -hmm. movie, the Piranha one. That's what one me, the last one me and Brand watched. Saw one, I saw a, one movie of Piranha that was a hot miss, and that was. But I'm a, the Piranha brought down a helicopter. Brandy, there's a movie called Piranha Conda. Piranha Conda. Piranha Conda? There's a movie called Piranha Conda. Oh, we're gonna have to look that one up. Yeah. That's what I didn't watch as stress relievers. Oh, it's Mega Piranha. That's what it was from Asylum. It was Mega Piranha, Mega Piranha from 2009. Mega Piranha. Yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. All right, guys. Let's go ahead. Yeah. And we'll, we'll continue to talk about this. But if you guys yeah. want to see these movies, we uh, Mega Piranha, which is from Asylum. We've seen Boa versus... Um, there are a lot of them on Prime. Yeah. Python versus Boa. This one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven, head and shark, um, meta, meta shark, uh, and sharks of the corn. <laughs> but for those, also, Heart of They Fall, uh, True Story, and Bruised. So those are good movies. All right. Guys. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about something called the incel. Oh, she got a finger, finger, finger. Beat up, uh, Brandy. Beat up, yes. It's a snack. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here like this all the time. I like this double. Where are you eating? Who me? Yeah. No, my vibrator's going off somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to talk about today is incels. Um, I don't know how familiar everyone is with that, but I came across this term just last week. A friend of mine, a um, Facebook friend of mine, there was a meme posted and this guy was like something about women not wanting to date him because um, of his nice personality or something like that. Clearly, according to the picture, wasn't his personality that made the women not want to date him. Um, but so, and then she commented incel and I had never heard of the term. So me being me, I looked it up and I'm like, 
This is the thing. I, yes. I didn't know it was a thing. Right. I need it. So I posted it and I to, to, to these two and I was like, this is what we're doing. So let me read this. This is from the Oxford Dictionary. An incel is a member of an online community of young men who consider themselves unable to attract women sexually, typically associated with views that are hostile towards women and men who are sexually active. Um, there are also women who are incels, but mostly it's men. And they rely on the anonymity of the internet. You know, they get into chat rooms and um, they kind of feed off of each other. They feed mm -hmm. off of each other's uh, hate and discontent um, about any number of things. It could be because they were bullied and never got a girlfriend in high school or never got a, never been able to date or have sex as an adult. And then that just turns into hatred and then in the most extreme ways, rage. And that rage turns into sexual assault and sometimes murder. Incel actually means involuntary celibacy. Mm -hmm. So the premise is that these men have something maybe physically wrong with them that makes them undateable or make them make them feel that they are so unattractive to right. sex. I was gonna say it definitely is a mind thing for some of them. Yeah, but you look at some of them and you're some like, of them and they're kind of fine. I'm like what? Right. There's nothing physically wrong with you. So what's the problem? And it's really about perception. And that's and crazy because like, there's a lot of women who feel that they're not attractive, like or have low self-esteem. We didn't create do no have women who, who do that, or is, are there any women in cells? Yeah, I, I haven't seen. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't see none now because when they when I when I researched a few of them and their thought process of why they're in cells and why or what they believe in or what their process is, it has nothing to do with what the actual definition is. Right. Um, there are a few women, not a lot, but there are a few women. Most for the most part. Um, we know of men being in cells because a lot of it is misogyny and hatred towards women. And, you know, the fact that women are, um, have lost their place in the world. And so, right. and Brandy, you and I talked about this last night, um, mm -hmm. how there is a lot, in, if you're on social media, you see it. Um, and we specifically talked about in the black community because we're black and so that's where we're paying more attention to, but it doesn't stop there. It's not just a, a, a black issue or Hispanic issue or white issue. This is across the board, but of course our social media feeds probably feature more black people than anything, but you still see it. Um, and you know what's crazy um, today, you know, on Facebook, you get your memories of what you said last year. And last year on this day, I literally said, I'm starting to wonder if men really like women because it's gotten worse since last year. I have never seen men so unhappy with women in my life. Like it is consistent. They are so me. It's like they hate us. It's quite odd, especially in the black community because that's why I'm that, like you said, I can only. And I think that the things that we talk about in this case, the things that we bring up about when we talk about black men or whatever men, you can, if you're not black, you can still apply that to whatever right. culture you come from or whatever race you come from, because it's to, to me, it's all the same in this case. But I think <clears throat> that you are partially right that men don't like women. I don't think men have really ever liked women. I think men have need women. Um, it is, it's a symbiotic uh, um, relationship. We need them, they need us, we need to procreate. But here's the thing I think that has changed a lot of this. Modern women do no longer require men for sustenance. Yes. We don't need men to maintain us financially. And that's a big big thing because in the 50s and the 60s and the, even in the 70s you know women couldn't even have credit cards in the 1970s so at, before you know before that time women, women are reliant on men for everything 
You could be a man who looked like Quasimodo, but if you had five cows and two acres, you could get the most beautiful woman on the block. The woman didn't have a choice in the first place. At all. Any man could pick you. Who was we talking, we talking about this with? Was it you, B? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we were talking about the whole color purple situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they didn't really have a choice. They were getting sold off. They didn't have a choice. We talked about it on our last show a little bit. That's what mm -hmm. it was. Um, they didn't really have a choice. They didn't have a choice back then. So, right. you just had to so your, some man comes up to your father and says, I want your daughter. Uh -huh. And I want that one. And I'm gonna give you Dope. this, this, that, and the third. And the dad says, "Go with this man." Period. That's it. Period. And you have nothing. You are totally reliant on that man for everything that you have, and anything that you gain during that marriage still belongs to him, even if you leave the marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, right now in this current climate, and this goes for both sexes, if the needs of either partner are not being met for whatever reason, you leave. I am no longer obligated to stay with you for the next 50 or 60 years just because we took some vows. You're not holding up your end of the bargain. I'm not happy here. I get to leave. That's a problem for traditionalists. You get to leave. And then on top of that, we have a rise in violence against women who don't reciprocate men's affection. Oh, you don't want to dance with me? I'm going to sock you in the face. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to give me your number? I'm going to throw my drink in your face. Things like that. Because it's women, you know, men no longer have the pick of the litter. They don't, they can't just pick any woman that they want. And women are grateful for the attention. It's not that way anymore. And you have to be more than attractive, physically attractive to get a woman. You, if you're not physically attractive, what's your personality? What's your attitude? Oh, you have a jacked up attitude? I'm not trying to talk to you. So do we know of which serial killers that we would actually call incels? Ooh. Ooh. Even think about that. Help, help. Um, okay, there are some there are some incidences of a spree killer, um, three spree killers that come that kind of pop out. But if you're talking about serial killers that would have been incels, I would say uh, Arthur Shawcross, who was the Genesee River killer. Um, he said that his aunt or something molested him when he was a child. Uh, he also killed his um, maid because he said that she stole from him. Like, it, you know, like when you, if you, he's, That's a good he's, choice. he's dead now, but if you watch any of the interviews that he did, you can, you can see this really hatred. Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, clearly hatred of women. Um, I think Ed Kemper. Reason why, Ooh. tell you why. Ooh, okay. Because because of how bad he was treated by his mom, she treated him pretty bad. So he already developed a hate for women at that point. At that point, because of his mother, she set the, 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 she set the stage for how he felt about all women, that they were all horrible. It was just, and then, I mean, look what he did to his own mom. Well, so, you're right, because when he was 14, he shot his grandmother because she yelled at his grandfather. See? You know, these are a, a long married couple. He doesn't even have anything to do with their argument or their no. She raised her voice at his grandfather. So she, really? he shot her. And then he shot the grandfather because he's like, he wouldn't want to live without her. Um, but I don't, I, I agree with you on one end, but on the other end, okay. I don't think he was necessarily an incel. I don't think, I think he hated his mom. I really do. And I think he hated, um, I think is he had it real, where, where the hatred stems from is it isn't that one, where it comes from i think in some cases yes but um 
In other cases, no. I think some of most of it's externalized. Like most of it, this incel thing is external because they hate other women. There was I was watching a um, a, a documentary from uh, the BBC, um, and they were they interviewed this guy who was nineteen and he lived with his mom, and he said that you know yes he was lonely. He did admit that some of this had something to do with depression. And the girl asked him, you know, he was talking about what happens in the chat rooms and online and how they talk about rape and how he could understand how he get there. But he said that he would never do that because he internalizes his issues. Like he recognizes that these are his issues. So she, she said something about his mom, like you're okay with people raping and killing people because they feel this way. But what about your mom? He's like, I would never do that to my mom. I love my mom. I couldn't even imagine that. So some of some of it may stem from the mom, but it's all about perception, perception of self. Like, how do I feel about me? I feel like I'm so unattractive that I can't get a date. And if it's if it's a physical thing, your mom, I mean, her DNA is in you, but she ain't had nothing to do with that. Like, Randy, you were watching the the Undateable. There's a show, a British show called Undateable. Was it was that the name of the show? Mm-hmm. And it was about people trying to get dates for people who were technically undateable. And it was like these mm. dating services trying to connect people together. So, Brandy, what, like, what, like watching that, because I didn't get a chance to watch it, but what, watching that, did, did you get a sense that they had mommy issues or was it they had issues? I think they had social issues. issues. Mm-hmm. And I think because it's, well, one guy in particular, I think that he had social issues, so he spent most of the time with his mother. Mm-hmm. That was so, the autistic guy. Yes, that's okay. the guy. Um, but, so, um, yeah, he spent most time with his mother. So even when he told the people what kind of woman he wanted, he wanted an older woman because, you know, he's used to his mom. But a lot of it was just they did not have social issues. They were just yeah. awkward or, or, you know, and that man was autistic, but all of them weren't autistic. Some of them were just right. very awkward, you know, not very social. Yeah. The first time that were just not attractive at all. Like, but I, I had, um, watched a docu. Well, let me wait to see if I'm back. Sorry about that. I had a call. Okay. I'm trying to... Go ahead, Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching this documentary um, uh, well the HBO mm-hmm. of uh, was an incel and I was watching it and I was looking at him and I'm like he's attractive though you know but then he started naming off all his conditions he had every bit of about 10 different conditions all of them solely being some kind of social disability um, I mean, I'm not saying anxiety is a disability what I'm saying is it's a form of something that he hasn't he can't master he can't figure out like uh, he was attractive i mean extremely attractive white guy um he was a little thrown off but that's because of his social anxiety it was just really bad like he had everything he was like social depression social anxiety so he was just doing this to her she was like he named off about eight different things also named them things off (laughs) and then he goes i didn't even know some of these existed that's what he told me he was like well told her he was like, I didn't even know some of these existed. He said, but my doctor said I got it. But he was so attractive. Right. So it's to me, it's like, like Randy said, it's social and people are just not able to communicate with other people. They have this social anxiety. So why is one thing predicates the other. Like I can't speak to people in public. Therefore, people in public won't speak to me. And so I'm taking what they're doing but it, what they're doing is a reaction to self, to me. Um, one of the um, things that I was watching said that um, they turned themselves into victims. That the incels turned themselves into victims and so everyone is against them. You're, you're, you're not sexually attracted to me, so it's your fault. Like, it's nothing wrong with me. It just sounds like some old serial, some old killer, uh, you know, Social anxieties, uh, victimed, just, I mean, this isn't making us a serial killer. 
Definitely. Yes, rejection. And you could have been rejected because you were doing something really like nutty. You know what I'm saying? You could have been not supposed to be acceptable. Okay. Exactly. So, um, you know, th these guys could be doing something like Brandy said, socially unacceptable or awkward. You could be trying to talk to me while you're sniffing my neck, you know, the back of my neck, breathing heavy or something. And that's off putting to certain people. You'd be like, oh, no. Like when in that undateable show, the guy, like he hadn't even been with the girl. The date wasn't even, you had just started. And he's like, um, remember these are British, so they're not speaking like, you know, you and me. But I don't know. I could tell that he, what he said, how he said it was weird. But he was like, so are, are we going to be boyfriend and girlfriend? This is our first date. You're acting weird. You're eating off my plate. Like, no, this is our first day. <laughs> on his side, he didn't feel like anything was wrong with what he was doing. But the other person is like, this is not it. He so was eating off of her plate. Like, it was right. okay. So that person is going, to, uh, is going to think that, oh, they're rejecting me. I've done everything. I'm a nice guy. Why wouldn't you like me? Because I don't. So yeah. they call. You're being weird. So these guys have, these people have a hatred of women, but also men who are sexually active with those women. So when they kill, and they do kill, they will sometimes kill the men as well, or any men that they see that are attractive, that are socially accepted attractive people. So they call the men, attractive men, chads. And chads are usually depicted in, you know, to them are muscular, super muscular, like super masculine guys. And then there are, the women are called Stacy's. So you have chads and Stacy's that are the center of their hatred, super attractive women, um, you know, uh, stereotypically attractive women. So um, I don't know any women killers that would go under incels. Irene Waros. Huh? Irene Waros. You think so? Yes. I, I think she was I don't think she was killing for that reason though. I think she hated men. Yeah, I don't think she was I don't I don't know. I just don't see her as an incel. I think that she hated men and she hated the fact that she had been uh what she perceived as they were all trying to rape her. Now, mind you, she was a sex worker, but to her, they were all trying to sexually assault her. So she killed them prior before they could do it. So in her head, she went into it with, he's bad. He's going to, he's going to do something. So, no one. so I think she's very, if she's not, can't be considered a true incel, she's right <laughs> on, she's right on the fence of that. She had a serious hatred. No, so. I mean, you know, or if I think it, she's an incel. I'd have to think about that. Because for a female, for a woman to be an incel or vol cell or whatever, I don't I think that's a term that they call women who who but uh, she did have a female lover. Yeah. I was gonna say she right. did have a woman lover. I mean, well, do you think that for, for men and for women, it presents itself differently? Like men, you know, they can't, you know, there are women, like you said, Brandy, few women that feel like they aren't sexually attractive because of self-esteem or they don't fit the social norm of what is attractive. Now, to be honest, neither of the three of us fit what is socially acceptable as attractive. However, neither of the three of us is by themselves. So, um, we don't miss it out on, you know what I'm saying? We don't miss out on attention at all. So I think for women, it presents itself differently because for women, it, it would be more about what they see. Like, I don't look like Naomi Campbell. Or I don't look like, you know, Rihanna. I don't look like Beyonce. So I can't be attractive. There, I don't know anybody who looks like, I don't think Beyonce looks like Beyonce half the time. She don't. And Rihanna definitely doesn't look like Rihanna. She's no, okay no. with showing her her naked face all the time. 
But I think for women, and I, you know, this is just my perception. I think that for women, it's about it. You know, I don't see myself as being that pretty. So of course you're not going to want me. And so you make yourself unattractive. You wear the big clothes. You don't pluck your eyebrows, which you don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, but you're not doing the things to make yourself into that attractive person that you envy. But then you punish those who don't find you attractive like that. So you think that was Renee's issue? Um, for Ivy Warner? Um, what did I say? Yeah. Did I say Renee? You said Renee. Yeah. Um, Not I think Renee. yes, because Eileen really wasn't that Eileen. unattractive mm -hmm. until she got older. Her hair, she, you know, she she had this masculine persona as she got older, her hair, um, she didn't have the great hygiene. So I think she turned herself into that so that she wouldn't be attractive to men. But she actively sought out men who would want her for sex work. Yeah. So that she could punish them. Yeah. That was her whole purpose. I'm going to make myself unattractive to men. But if these men still seek me out, even though I'm deliberately making myself look like this, then they need to be punished. They need to be punished. Then I can see how you can say that. Yeah. I can see. And I think that was her whole purpose. Um, she was she was looking to punish them. And if, you know. Pretty much. She's like, you know, she was like a black widow. And, and I, as far as these men go, I think that they, they say that they are not able to be sexually active. They're, I don't understand. I've never met a man unattractive, unfortunate looking, or just plain damn ugly who wasn't able to get sex. Brandy, Me we either. personally know a few that we talked about today. Yeah, I don't know how they, I don't even know. That have been unattractive since we've known them in junior high. And they have an entire stable of women. And they're probably full of infections, but they got them. And we scratch our heads all the time trying to figure out how does he do it? Now, <laughs> Oh, I'm God. not kidding. And and Jackie, I'm not, I won't say this man. Well, I, I know some. I know yeah. some. We will show you a picture and then we will tell the story and then you'll be able to see and we'll tell the story about all the women. And you'll be like, how? How? <laughs> the confident. You can get a man. Confident. I mean, it's more to looks. Women, women exactly. flock to personalities. Women flock to some but women. All you gotta do is make them laugh. Is, his personality to me is whack. Well, but I guess true. somebody will find it attractive. But see, here's the thing, Jackie. He's unfortunate looking. And then his, he hygiene is horrible. his hygiene is mercy. Mm. I mean, he got, got hot meat and Cheeto teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and then old hot hot stuff hot meat <laughs> and got a brothel of women and I'm like how okay okay so then my next question is okay you say he uh, he's not attractive not that that matters I don't even you know what attraction doesn't matter we're taking it out he stinks he has no personality he has one but it's not great can he, is he funny? No, Not to he's me. Corny as fuck. He's corny. He is always he has corny. Is he the corny? Just if you close your eyes, is he the corny funny though? No. Okay. So by standards, by America's standards, then he. <laughs> so okay. But so in, this is very. It's something. It's probably his confidence. I mean, it's so many things. It has that he does have. <laughs> that's a 10 out of 10. The confidence is a 10 out of 10. That's why. And I think that's what um, a lot of the incels are missing is confidence. Because, like I said, there's a lot of attractive men that I see. And I'm like, like, okay, listen. 
You take uh, not, and, and, and please be the well, people say this. We all have our own beauty standards. Yeah, we know that. Right. Okay. But there's some people that you know you see and you be like, if how? Yeah. What happened? So like, what? and it's that confidence every time. It's right. always confidence. Just think about it. Typically, historically, you can take an unattractive man, whether it's his face or his body. Especially, let me tell you, especially a large black man. You throw some cologne on him? A right. large black man who smells right. Wheel day one in a heartbeat. Honey. Wheel day one in a heartbeat. Put, put the cologne on. Put the cologne on, big boy. I swear to God. Bro. To room with this, like his face doesn't have to be all that. But if you walk into a room with a big, with a big brother who smells good, he said, everybody he already know why you brought him to the party. And he got game. Oh. He ain't coming up with, with shoes, man, jeans. Uh, if he come up in there with swag, I don't give you. You can have swag without a nice clothes. If he come in there smelling good, and can talk, he got he every woman to, in the room. He got everybody in the room. Everybody goes his flock to him. And every Idris Elba and Morris Chestnut doesn't stand a chance. Does not stand a chance against that big dude because everybody, mm, he smells good and he's probably funny. Yeah. And there's Perfect. nothing you could tell him about his appearance because he knows it already. I, whatever. And that goes right. the same for a larger woman. A larger yes. woman who has confidence can get any man in the room because she walks in like she already owns it and any man is hers and she smells good and she looks don't, good. Don't, yeah, I got this role. And don't and, believe the hype that they can't. And I got, you know, I got this now. right here on the back. <laughs> Well, you know, in there, because you know I'm not as like I used to, but I can I put on my kids' eyes when I used to go clubbing. I would any dude I pick out in there, I'm gonna get him his number. He's gonna do whatever. He's gonna be dancing with me. He's gonna be out in my face. I'm gonna make sure that because you just walk with the standard of I already know I look good. So you gonna give the program or you gonna let somebody else do it? You know you that's why. That's what why you gonna do. Your friend looking so at me. <laughs> Your friend looking at me. I give him some attention. Right. So, you know, it could be it could be done. Please don't let anybody fool you and, and make you think that uh any woman or a plus size yeah, woman yeah. for sure, any man, you can walk and get anybody you want. That's why this whole insult thing is crazy to me, is because I've seen what um people consider unattractive by the by the standard, by the Western standard, I've seen these people, you know, move and integrate and be able to find a partner um, and be successful at dating. Um, it has to be the personality. It's the, it has to be. Your personality is just... It's yeah. key. Now, one of the... Um, Brandy, you asked about serial killers. Now, um, one of the the three that most people talk about, not necessarily serial killers, they were spree killers um, who allowed that rage to just build and build and build and build and build until, um, you know, it manifested itself in murder. Now, in 2014, May of 2014, Elliot Roger, um, 22 years old, uh, went on a killing spree in Santa Barbara. He uh, killed six people, injured about 24. Um, it was planned. He had videos on YouTube with his manifesto. He said, oh, what did he say? He talked about like how he, uh, he you know, he planned it like he's getting his revenge. You know, none of you guys wanted to date me. So now you have to die sort of thing. Um, he stabbed three men. Well, this is on the 23rd of May. What are you doing? He stabbed three men. Uh, then he went to a sorority house and sh uh, shot outside the house, shot three women. Um, then he shot a guy, a student at a deli. Then he went on a drive-by shooting rampage, um, got into a, kind of like a small shootout with the police and then he shot himself. Now, if you see a picture of Elliot Roger, he's not unattractive. No, he lied. He's, he's not a wild face lie. 
His mom said that he had Asperger's syndrome, which is high functioning autism. It was undiagnosed. So I don't know if he really had it. Now he came from a pretty famous family, or you know, you know, in industry circles. His did he was born in England. His dad was a director. Um, his grandfather and uncles, they were like all in the biz. His mom was successful in her industry as well. I think she was a nurse or something like that. I'm not sure. But she was successful. Um, and so he had advantages. Uh, he did drop out of school. He moved to uh, Isla Vista uh, near Santa Barbara. Uh, so he had advantages. But he was pretty, pretty awkward. And I think if he did have Asperger's syndrome, maybe that accounted for the awkwardness. Maybe that accounted for the social, that he didn't have social cues to know how to approach people. Um, it did say in a few uh, articles that uh, he, you know, he was bullied in school. He didn't have a lot of friends, but maybe that's what it was because you know, maybe they weren't really diagnosing a lot of autism, you know, when he was growing up, like they do now, like, you know, like one in every three kids is autistic or something, some crazy number. So, and I just completely made that number up. I don't know. But um, maybe he was undiagnosed, he went undiagnosed, because he went undiagnosed, no one was able to get him the type of help he needed. And he saw that as people rejecting him and therefore he couldn't have sex. Like his whole thing was about not being able to have sex. You could hire a prostitute. Like, I don't understand. So he goes on the killing rampage. And once he did that, all these people in these, the uh, incel community, a lot of people started praising him as like a hero. Mm -hmm. And so the guy in to Tallahassee, um, Scott's uh, barrel, he did it in 2018. He drove 250 miles to a yoga studio, registered for the class in open fire because of the same thing like he, he you know they later found like he had like a whole man mini manifesto as well. Well, of course it is. And he says, this is what he said about girls that treated, how the girls treated him in the eighth grade. So he's talking about eighth grade girls that he remembers. He says, this is Scott Barrow from the Tallahassee shooting. He says, just beneath their blushing lashes and their innocent smiles lies the most rancid and putrid, sickening essences. You are hating on girls as early as junior high. For the reason that you are high, who you are now. Nobody was tight in the stop. eighth grade. Right. Stop. Stop. Juana Randa uh, was uh was was pretty tight in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. And if they were tight in the eighth grade, they're not tight now. He, I don't know. Juan, 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 he has to be. He has to still be fine. I mean, you remember Bethel Castillo. And I mean we just yeah, made names. But you remember Bethel, he he's still fine. Yeah, he is still. Fine. He's still fine. The little man Gill. In eighth grade. He fine. So there's a few. I don't think mine, man. Yeah. There's a few. I, I was thing. rocking on straight personality. But see, here's the thing. You have these these guys that we just named right here. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. In eighth Ooh. grade, I dated this big old tall guy, and he smelled good. His mom was a doctor, and he dressed really nice. He was not attractive. However, he smelled good and he dressed really nice. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna date him. <laughs> okay, so I was completely he was not attracted to me, but I talked to him because he was a big guy. He was about six four. We were eighth grade. Oh wow. You know, I can say that you so know I was like, I'm junior high school kids are pretty are pretty horrible as far as personalities and the way we act towards each other. We're pretty horrible in junior high. Um, we're the mean girls, we're the popular boys, we're all of that put together. Uh, and depending on your personality, some of that just runs right off your back. Like I was so unaffected and so unfazed by the mean girls, by the cute popular boys, by the cute popular girls. Like if we were friends, we were friends. I didn't give a shit. 
Me um, I, you know, it didn't bother me, but it bothered some people. And I can understand how is because in the eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade, we're little shits. <laughs> they are little but shits. you can't internalize that as a 40 year old man hearkening back to the eighth grade talking about these girls are the most rancid and putrid, sick, sickening essences. Are you serious? But I'm sure there were some other girls that he was overlooking because he didn't want that. Right. Thank you. That's he where. That's where. Girls. Ready. That's where it all boils down to. You have some women who right? are willing to accept who you are, but you don't want them. You don't want them. You want the one you cannot have because she yeah. already interested in a whole nother type of man that's instead of getting the women who are attracted to you. There's a whole nerd community. They are some of the most attractive people. The nerd guys are not attracted to the nerd girls. No, they want they the want, bombshell. They want the mean girl, the mean popular girl. And you're like, but they want the they want, No. They want you. Okay, so I'm glad you brought up nerds. And, and, it wasn't just, and it wasn't to say that the social people were nerds. I'm saying no, that they're, they're nerds are the ones that gonna have the money. Is right. After graduation. But, but socially, and this goes back to what you're saying, Jackie, that guys want girls who don't want them. And then you say women only want this, this, and this. No, those women wanted those guys. Right. Those women. But I was on What's TikTok. That and there was there's like these these black nerds, blurts, black male blurts, who were saying that when they were growing up, they could never date. Like they were saying that they dated white women because none of the black girls liked them. No, the black girls that you were looking at didn't like you. Hmm. That's it. You're trying, you to talk to Keisha that, you're trying to talk to Keisha that had 70,000 friends when you could have been talking to Martha, who was over there in your same community. But no, you don't want Martha. You Martha don't, don't know as many people as Keisha, and you think Keisha gonna make you popular. So if it's, it's like more. you're dating above your pay grade, you don't have the social skills to date Keisha, but you want to punish everybody else and say, well, you know what, I, I date low over here because no one liked me. Yes, people liked you. You were only fixated on a small population that you didn't, that, that you weren't even a part wanted. of. That everybody wanted. I remember, um, so later on in life, I met up with, with the old friend. And that old friend said, you know, I was always attracted to you. Oh God, how many like, times have we heard this? I'm like, what? You was? He was like, yeah. But I never saw him like that because he wasn't attracted to me. And if I had saw him the proper way and not been so shallow, then he probably would have made me a much happier woman in life. But because. I was stupid. <laughs> you, your gaze was not on him. And it's that, so stupid. That's that's all. Okay. Like, he's not that's, socially. He's not sociably acceptable. People will laugh at me. But he was a good that's person. That's what you do. This this is Just normal stupid. human behavior. Just you stupid. don't know how many times, and Brandy can attest to this because we've heard it from probably the same That's people. Stupid. Only did that one person. Is in high school. We'll talk to the people for that we do in high school, whatever. And I'll be like, I try, I want to talk to you. Like, when? Why do you all the time? I'm like, why did you think? think? Why well, I didn't think you would I didn't see you like that because you didn't see me like that. I didn't right. think you saw I me like that. that. So I didn't give you any play because you didn't give me no play. Because you was giving Keisha play. Yeah, that's who you want it. You want a Keisha. You was looking at Keisha. We were looking at Darnell. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. You know, and now Keisha ain't worth shit. Darnell nope. ain't worth a damn. No. Nope. He's not attractive no more. He got a he got a George Jefferson. He's not attractive. Sherman Hemsley. Yeah, he look, <laughs> looks like Sherman. Oh, and Sherman. you're just kind of like baffled. But again, in normal human interaction, you're like, oh, well, I missed it. That's funny. You know, whatever. Or, or, or they felt um, some type of intimidation, like they couldn't say how they felt for whatever reason. And I'm like, you should have said it because 
I might, I might've been open to it, but you never said anything. So I, you yeah. know, you tell. here we but are. Now it's too late. No and conversely, saying. conversely, okay. There was this one football player that from the time I hit seventh grade, he was already in high school, but he would come to the, to the junior high to come pick up his brothers. Right? <clears throat> now his brother was fine as hell too. But I didn't hold the room. She just said, you stand. <laughs> right? So he would come to the school, get his brother. And I always talked to the little brother, like, oh, you know, brother, brother, brother. But he was, the, he was already, you know, popular in the 10th grade. But, you know, so by the time we get to high school, he's a senior. Girl, I didn't even care that I was a freshman. I didn't care that he dated, um, uh, uh, cheerleaders, and I did not care. I made it very well known. I want you, like you, you're the guy. You're the guy. And his response was, "Oh, you know, you're so and so's little sister, whatever. I don't care, whatever." A couple of years ago, maybe five years ago, we had this conversation, and he's like, "I never knew." Man, I'll sock you in your damn face. How did you know? Irish know? Huh? Yes, Irish, Irish friend. Um, how did you never know? Because everybody knew. I mean, mind wasn't looking. He was thinking you're just, a, you know, a freshman that had a crush on him. Exactly. But it didn't stop me as this dumpy freshman because I've always been a round figure girl, right? Did not stop me whatsoever. <laughs> From going after the star football and basketball player did not stop me at all. They were jaded. See, and when I was growing up, I was a, a round little girl. And so you get used to people, you not me not being a standard, not only in my chocolate ex growing up, I was round. <laughs> double X. That's a double X. Um, I also got criticized because I wasn't black enough. That was a triple X and garlic. In Garland, I wasn't black enough. And I'll, I'll never forget that I was so used to people like making jokes about me and playing. This fine ass dude told his friend to come tell me that he wanted to holler at me. I lost it. Because normally I was very quiet, very, very, I just didn't speak. And I cussed that boy out some serious and was like, You and your raggedy friend, y'all are being horrible people. You know, I'm making him feel real bad. And he walked over to that dude and was like, I'm sorry, man. She, we really hurt her feelings. Like she thinks that you're playing, and he felt so bad. <laughs> he was like, "I really want to talk to her, though," and I felt like trash because I was like, "Oh, no. but See, I had already been, I had already been deemed and had already been rejected and had already been talked about so much that I just assumed that they, this fine ass person, felt the exact same way as some of the other people did. You messed that blessing up. You could have become an incel based on that one interaction, right? There. That one, but I didn't. I was just like, man, I had to chunk it up for about a month. A month, I thought about it. I was like, ah, right. because that seems like it's classic. Like you, you, you've been rejected and bullied so much that any attention you perceive as being mm -hmm. negative or someone's really trying to mock you, so you you automatically think it's negative, and so you go on the you go it's on horrible. the defensive and you attack. That's incel behavior. Yeah. That's in so, bad. so these guys, and you cannot tell me that none of these guys have ever been approached by a woman. And a you, no, you one, you might not be approached by that woman that you want or the woman You've that been you approached. deserve. Mm -hmm. So how dare an unattractive woman approach me? So it's not that the women aren't approaching them. It's just that they're not the women that they want. So you're saying that you're unattractive, but yet you have the nerve to say someone else is unattractive. <laughs> Brandy, what? Brandy, so Brandy and I had this discussion the other night when we were talking about the Undateable show. Ooh. And one of the guys on there was quite unattractive. And Brandy facially said, challenged. facially challenged, Brandy said the only way that he will be able to date is if he dated someone blind. If he did it, someone what? Blind. God damn, baby. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Cool. 
But the irony is, here's the irony to this. The woman that they sent him up with at the dating agency? Blind. Was blind. Based only on mother can love, huh? I think his, mo- his mama might have did a shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's a precious baby. But um, but we were all talking, but we were talking about how, you know, why is he ugly? He I will show you a picture. We'll let you okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um I didn't say that he that I said that he had a chance with somebody. I didn't because the blind part was real harsh to me. Um, but <laughs> what I was saying, like. You know, people who are unattractive will say that, you know, will call I them did. Right. She said that out of her mouth. She said it. Jesus Christ. And I wanted to hang up on her because everything that she talked about on the show was just so horrible. <laughs> it was just awful. And I'm like, I can't believe you're saying this. And she's like, you can, like, these people are looking for love, but they keep turning people down. Because they're, you know, you're unattractive. But I'm like, if you hungry, you'll eat, right? So I don't think that if you are out there looking for love and you're so desperate that you should just be turning down people because, you know, oh, she, you know, she she's too dark or she has freckles or she's too big. You looking for love? You should just take it where you can until he's starts. <laughs> that's what you really look for. But you can't get you can't necessarily get what you're looking for because you don't have whatever it takes to get what you're looking for. So if I need a ride, if I need a car, I I've liked guys that weren't attract at first weren't attractive to me. It they, they weren't they weren't like horrible looking, but they weren't I wasn't attracted to them physically, but. They had a bomb personality. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was a mental attraction there. And did that eventually turn into something to where their looks were accept- more acceptable to you? Yeah. But th- there's also people that have been, had a bomb personality. And then I also, <laughs> like, I can't do it. I just can't. Because have you I- ever, have you ever not been attracted to someone who's actually physically attractive? Yep. Yes. And it's because their personality is horrible. That they look ugly to me now. Yes, because the only thing they're focused on is the fact that I'm attractive. I can't okay. even they, look at them. I can't even look at them in a way of them being even their muscles, everything is attractive. It's not a, it's not attractive to me because your personality yeah. is so bad. Ugly. They've become a chat, like these incels call them. They're just, they just look good. Yeah, I, I, that's happened a lot. All it takes is one wrong, and I'll be like, uh, block. <laughs> I'll take block. Okay, before we go, I'm going to ask this question. Okay, so we talked a little bit about like recent, uh, you've seen a, like a, a recent uptick in men hating women. You said, Jackie, that men, you think men don't like women. Um, I don't think they do either. Um, do you, do you, how do you think that that can change for men who don't like women? I know you guys, whoever's watching this might think we're male bashing. We're not necessarily male, no, we're not male no. bashing, but this is the subject we're talking about. Yeah. It's a real thing. And it's not male bashing because you have to be in a hole if you haven't noticed this. If you haven't noticed if you, I don't care what social platform you're on, if you haven't noticed the amount of woman bashing going on, then you are in denial in general. And now I'm starting to think maybe you're one of them because you have to be pretty crazy not to see it. But um, I don't think there is anything. I think because um, as long as women have made a decision that they don't have to put up with nothing anymore and and, and they don't have to settle for nothing anymore, you know, it, it, got, to, it got to the point where women were accepting that Heart pain was a part of a relationship because we have already a, a, a toxic love was a part of a relationship because we have already established in our relationships in society that black women are supposed to be strong enough to deal with that. So now that women are starting to be like, you know what, I don't have to put up with this anymore. 
And black men, that means that now you're held up to a standard where you have to actually do right. And in order to have a submissive woman, you actually have to give us something to submit to. Um, I think they can't handle that because they don't really want to submit. They, they don't really want to do their part. They just want us to do our part. So the best option for you to be is, on my opinion, is to stand up and do what you know is right. You know, you want me to submit, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? I'm paying 90% of the bills. You know what I'm saying? That's not a problem with bills, but don't tell me you're the man of the house. If we equal, baby, that means we're a team. You're not the man of the house. I, I, we're, we're a team. That's the way I feel about it. So, you know, you just got to step up. This is reality. So, Brandy, what do you think? How I don't does, know. How does the narrative change? I don't think the narrative changed. I just think that there is a platform for them to vocalize it. I, I mean, and a lot of these people are going on their own personal hurt or or um, their personal hurt or their experiences. So there's nothing you can change about that unless they find that person who's willing to deal with them that way or they have some kind of awakening. But I don't think it's it, it's always there's always going to be those men. There's always going to be those men. Um, I mean, we know them those men. We grew up with those men. We right. it's not like a surprise. We know they were this way before. So um, I think that they just now have a platform and an audience to listen. I didn't know those men. I, I knew well, men. I knew I knew men who used women beyond using them, as in you know, sexually, maybe financially, rather be any of those things. But to be perfect, maybe because my family is just a little throwed off. I don't know. Um, but isn't, but I, isn't that isn't that the same thing though? If you're using women sexually and financially, right, right, which, which isn't any better. I'm saying that I never heard them say we don't need women in our life. I'm still. I mean. I, I it's, it's getting to the point. I've never heard them say. I've never heard them say those words. But from what they say, clearly they have a toxic view of, of, yeah. of women, and they may think what they're maybe thinking maybe maybe wrong. because maybe it's our videos and what I'm speaking on may be different than what y'all are talking about. Because when when I when I speak of the videos that I'm seeing, of course I'm not saying the exact words. We hate women. That's not that's they're not never going to say that. Um, what they're saying is women are useless. Women bring no value to a relationship. That is hatred. One, right. That so that's the hatred. I'm saying that's that my, exactly my dad, my about. uncles, obviously, I'm saying visually, I saw them sleep with multiple women. There ain't no different than any other big room. But to, for, to, for them to literally go, women bring no value. That Their actions are different. Yes, I get that. But to actually walk around and be like, well, I don't think women hold a value. We have men on, on TikTok who are literally like, I'm not dating another woman until y'all get y'all shit together and do this. Collectively, well, you not going to have no woman. That's that. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm and saying. And you're going to turn yourself into an incel. To speak to the men in your experience, Jackie, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, that your experience is wrong, but just think about it. If you are sleeping with multiple women, if you are using women financially, you are essentially saying that women are useless and they have no value except outside of what they can physically provide to me. The only value that a woman has is being a sexual vessel because I need to get it. I need to have sex so I can only have so socially acceptably. I can only have sex with a woman that's socially acceptable. Uh, as far as financial, I'm going to use her because she's stupid enough to give me all of her money. Yeah. And these men on, on social media, like Brandy, what you said is that they have not changed. They are living their grandfather's and their great uncle's lives. Yeah. They're living in their shadow because they were little kids listening at the, you know, around the corner to their grandfathers and their great uncles talk about women and talk about their exploits. And what the, this is the problem. They didn't listen to the whole story. Mm -hmm. They got snippets of this. And when they're, when, when they try to apply those same standards or those same practices to modern women, it didn't work. It didn't work. So now you hate them because my grandfather told me that this is how the women are and da 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 da. 
that age is past. Women don't act like that anymore. And the reason why women don't act like anymore is because we were listening to our grandmothers and we were listening to our great aunts who said, don't let a man do this to you. Have your own. Keep you some pocket money. They weren't able to do that with their husbands, but they told their granddaughters, yeah. keep you some pocket money. Yeah. If that man is not treating you right, get your shit and you leave. If you feel like something's going wrong across that dinner table or your date, you pay for your half and you get your ass out. Take your own car. Don't let a man lead you around by the nose. That's what they were telling us. So you listening to your granddaddy and he's telling you that this is the way women going to be and you do what you want to do as long as you put as long as you put food on the table, they got to do what you want what you want them to do. Oh, wow, but our grandmothers were saying to us, baby, whether or not he puts food on that table, bring your own snacks to the movie. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So the game has changed on both sides. These men are trying to bring old game, but we got different rules now. And so you get these men who get on there who's, you know, they are openly, like you said, Jackie, Jackie, you never heard them openly hate, like say the words, but you can tell by their actions and the things that they do say. Y'all don't like women. Because we're not acting the way that you, that we should, that they told you, you, somebody's grandfather told you that women should act like this and we're not doing that. And they don't know how to handle no, us not do doing that. This goes to the part of being socially inept. A lot of these guys don't know how to have a conversation. They're used to texting. Men don't. These men don't know how to have a conversation. They're used to texting. Mm -hmm. They're used to, hey, shorty, let me holler at you. A lot of women are like, who? Who are you, who, who you talking to? Who shout us? You know, and it doesn't work on the women that they want. It works on the women in their community, but it doesn't work on the women that they want. Oh, that's good. So they want to use the women in their community for sex and money, but they want to marry the women outside their community and the women outside their community. Uh, that's so oh. true. I, I've not been like this my whole life. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I know. I remember them in school, young. Doing the same stuff, like what they do now does not surprise me because they were like that when we were younger. Right. So they have not evolved. Yeah. Like, I'm going to push mm -hmm. up on you and you're going to take it and you're going to like it and we're going to be together. No, we're not. No. No. I need to leave immediately. I don't. There's something wrong with me because I won't take what you're giving. Yeah. What do you mean? I got money. I'm fine. People like me and you don't want me. Now I'm going to bash you. That's high school behavior. Men have not evolved and women are leaving them behind. Women have finally have the opportunity to play catch up. We've been these are also men. These are also men who haven't left their, their environments. Yeah, their environments, mentally or physically, they are still in the same place that the last time I saw you. That's true. That's the, very true. Those men that, that are there at the same, I mean, the last corner you've seen them sitting on, when they're you come back there. years later, they're still on that corner. That is very, very true. So they can't even have their their thoughts to evolve because they haven't left. Like sometimes you need to leave mentally, you need to leave spiritually and you need to leave physically. Like you need to, to leave and see something else. So if they, if you think of, I and mean, I'm just literally asking, if, if they left, you think that wouldn't help them evolve or is, is they that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I was just at, like, just asking if that's the job. Yeah, you'll, run into, left, you'll, you'll, you'll run into the reason, the, reason I, the reason the reason I ask that is because I know men who left the stoop and they still didn't evolve. So I'm saying that's why I'm asking. Did they go of, to the same type of place? So no. it's not just it's not your, just in your environment, the people you are with, like your friend circle, every I mean, all of that has something to do with it. Yeah, did you hang around the same type of people? Because if you hang around, if you carry if you don't have new experiences in the places that you go, what's the point of leaving? Yeah, I agree. 
If you go on vacation, I'm saying I know people who left the stoop and still act like they was on the stoop, right? Because they went they to the stoop. Really stoop. They went to the stoop. They just found stoop. people like them. Yeah. So what's the point of going if you go on vacation? But the only thing you did was shop at Walmart while you were on vacation. What was the point of you going on vacation? You left to do the exact same thing that you do at home. You did not have a, a different experience. You had the exact same experience in a new place. So everything else canceled out. You did not learn from what you just did. And these, like you said, these people, some of these men go to the military and, and have the opportunity to travel the world, but come back the same way. They're, they're rewarded for their bad behavior. Just thank God that there's men who are not <laughs> right. still stuck physically. Right. Yeah. right. Because there would be no children. No. Nah. Over here. Be, yeah, I'm still over there. <laughs> this, this is why I only have the one child. Yeah, over there. Uh, <laughs> this is why I only have the one. This is why I have one because I did not want to get caught up with somebody in that had that type I, of attitude. You don't want to keep repeating toxic, toxic mm -hmm. behavior. I've dated people again. Me, my my black ass brown self, have dated people who seem way above my pay grade, but they let me. They also let me know <clears throat> that I was above my pay grade. And that you should be grateful. And that's oh, when I left. Bye. Bye. Wow. No, I'm not grateful for you being here. Because you chose to be here. But you let me know that, you know, I could have this woman. I can then you should go get her. Ho holla at her. Be best. Don't come over here. But guess be what? Best. It's been years, it's been years later, and you still trying to holler. Go on, sir. Going on. I'm still black and I'm still round. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't changing. That part never changed. That part never changed. All right, y'all. We could keep talking about this for hours. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully, um, we kind of shed some light on this incel thing. You probably, like Brandy said, you probably know some, but didn't know that you knew that that's what they were. But now that we've talked about it. You definitely gotta know that you know some of these kind of people, um, and for the most part, we I do have to kind of say this: for the most part, incels aren't dangerous. Yeah. They have some personality quirks. They have a crazy belief system that that is not socially acceptable. However, for the most part, they are not dangerous people. Um, they just they have they have they have something that they're battling, you know. I don't know how to how they can get over that. Maybe they need therapy. We didn't talk about the mental aspects of this, but definitely some of them may have some mental health issues. And like in any group, there are extremists, and those are the ones who are harmful. But when it comes to extremists, there's nothing you can do about that until they do something. So um, for those who are your incel, if you have get off, get off. Make some make it some upsetting sounds on here. I don't know. What happened? So you might get some incel that say something. Yeah, and again, I'm not bashing, in, you know, anybody, in, you know, incel community included, but get off the internet because all you're going to find in chat groups in these rooms is other people who feed into the same thing yeah. and they get just out build your rage. Feed other people, which during the pandemic, I'm sure it was rough. Oh, I'm quite sure these groups were just so huge during you, you their can. numbers. When in that case, find a new group. Just find a new group to, to insert yourself in. Like, uh, pick one of your hobbies and insert yourself in a new group and try that. It may work out way better than you think. Feed into something positive rather than your the negative mm. aspect. Because if you are around people who have negative thoughts and speak negatively, then you are also going to feed into that. And you just do nothing but go back and forth. And then you it just kind of spreads like the virus. Mm -hmm. Um, but kindness does too. Good things when you speak kindness and you speak good things into the atmosphere into the universe, those things spread as well. So do that. Try that instead. Um and just and shoot your shot. Yeah, shoot your shot. And if if you get rejected, you know what? And put it this way. If you shoot your shot at somebody and they and they say no, nine times out of ten, it didn't have anything to do with you. No. 
it's a Wednesday and Wednesday's a bad day for her. That's all. You know, she, she's busy. She, she got to get to work. Now it's not a good time. I just dropped my ice cream cone and I'm pissed off because if I drop my ice cream on we man, I ain't going to say yes to nobody. So don't don't internalize someone's rejection because it has nothing to do with you. Jackie, what are you doing? On that note,